What's up, welcome back. In this episode, we're gonna talk about installing Karafka to handle a Kafka connection for event streaming in a Ruby on Rails application. So Karafka is this Ruby gem here that has a, a framework. It gives you a framework for working with Kafka. And a couple of pieces of that framework are these two components. One is called a producer, and that is for like publishing events. Your producer is your pub and a consumer Consumer is for consuming those events or like pulling messages off of a topic and then processing, processing it or chewing through it. So we've got both of those sides for event streaming. Now you might be using just one or just the other, um, but today we're gonna go through and set up first a local instance, a local running instance of Karafka with a local broker and a local, uh, local everything. And then we'll connect it to Confluent which is a cloud provider that will like host your Kafka broker in the cloud. Um, there's lots of cool things that you can get with Kafka. Like uh, a lot of people will use it for like data pipelining, uh, data pipelining. If, if you're using it for like logs or um, very dense streams of real time data. So let's start by saying brew install uh, Java if you haven't already. We're also gonna install uh, Zookeeper and we're also gonna brew install Kafka. And this will let us run the service locally. So we can say brew services start Zookeeper and brew services start Kafka. And these will now be running locally. So brew services list pipe grub Kafka. Okay, so we've got this um, this service that started here. And if we take a look at the, this like settings for the Kafka service, you'll find that there's this server.properties file here. So let's open that up. Um, in your local running Kafka service, this is where you would configure a whole bunch of information about the broker and whether or not you want to change the settings for listeners or your advertised listeners. So if you're running this inside of a Docker, uh, a Docker instance, for example, you would need to go through and change your listeners and your advertised listeners so that the networking works as expected. Now, the other thing you'll see in settings is the bin directory for Kafka. So if we just list what's in that bin directory, you'll see a whole bunch of different executables that can be helpful. Um, so if we say like, I don't know, which Kafka ACL, uh, ACLs, you'll see that like there is an executable on our path because we brew installed it. Um, one, there's like a handful of things that will be handy in here if you need to run some commands locally. One example is we can run this Kafka topics, list all the topics for the bootstrap server localhost uh, 9092, which is where it should be running. And now we can see a bunch of topics that are um, set up on this local server, basically. Okay, so now that we have this local service running, we've got like that sort of set up. Let's go set it, uh, create it as part of our Rails application. So let's check out a new branch and bundle add Karafka. And this is gonna add this Karafka gem to our gem file. And one of the nice things about Karafka is that it gives you a web UI. It also has um, uh, this like install command that's gonna set up a couple files for us. And it has this command that we're gonna run called uh, Karafka server. This is how we actually start chewing through those events in the same way that you might start up a separate worker for your background job handling. Um, we need to set up a separate server that is going to pull objects off of the queue uh, I'm sorry, it's gonna pull messages off of a topic and then chew through them and consume them. So this Karafka server thing works hand in hand with our consumers. So the Karafka server is gonna be part of that process, which, uh, we, so first to get Karafka installed, we're gonna do bundle exec Karafka install. Okay, this created three different files. One of them is in the root, karafka.rb, and it has a bunch of setup for a Karafka app. And right here at the top, this is telling our basic config about how we are connecting to the broker or like the bootstrap servers. And so because we're running locally on 9092, this is the service, the local Kafka service that we just set up with Brew. 
And uh, so this is gonna let us, should let us connect to that. Um, down below, we're gonna see something interesting. We have some routes. This is very, this should be very familiar if you've written uh, Rails before and you've built out web routes. In this case, instead of having anything about a path or part of a request that's coming in, we're gonna route based on the topic. So you can sort of think of the topic as like the channel or as like the group, like the, the pipe of messages that are gonna be coming through. In this case, we're saying anytime we see any new messages for the example topic, use the example consumer. So there were a couple other files here created for us. One of them is example consumer. And each consumer has a consume method where you'll deal with messages. In this case, we're just iterating over all of the messages that we were passed and printing out their payload uh, just to the terminal. And this inherits from application consumer. So if you have app-wide um, config that you want for every single consumer, you can add that here. Um, okay, so now that we've got this set up, we have this example topic. So if we uh, see a message on the example topic, then we should see that it's like printed out to the command line. So let's see if we can fire this up. So we should be able to say bundle exec Karofka server, and this should start the listener. Now you'll notice there is like a pro version of Karofka and they have a bunch of additional features and things. Um, open source, it's hard, to, it's hard to be sustainable in open source. And so I admire their their approach to kind of like limiting some features. Uh, it's similar to Sidekick Pro or some of those other things that we've seen in like the, the open source ecosystem. Um, okay, so now that that service is running, we wanna leave that up and going. And that is going to like pull, again, it's gonna pull messages off of the example topic and then chew through them. And I'm gonna open up Rails console and inside of the Rails console, we want to produce a message. So we want to publish a message to the example topic. So under the hood, Karofka uses another tool called WaterDrop, um, but we can access like a generic producer, so a generic publisher through Karofka. And we can just say producer.produce and then pass in a few required arguments here. Um, one is the topic. So this is the topic that we want to talk about. In this case, we're gonna use example so that it matches the topic here. And then the second one is just the payload. And the payload needs to be some string. And that's it. That's like the bare minimum. Uh, oh, I guess it's either produce sync or produce async. Okay, and you'll see, ah, boom, this crashed. Okay, why did this crash? Or it threw an error. Consume job, uh, unexpected token at some string. Okay, so the consumer um, did not expect that. So maybe, I can't remember if this wanted it to come in as like some JSON or something like that. Test some string dot to JSON. Okay, let's see here. Uh, let's just say like P messages and then See if this picks that up. I think we need to restart if we change. Oops. If we make changes to the uh, consumer. Okay. Uh, it seemed like that. Oh, maybe we had started this before we had. Let's see. Okay. So consume job on this example. All right, so now it's printing out the messages. Um, okay, and this is coming back as a Karofka messages object. And, all right, let's see if we can restart our Karofka server, produce another string, okay. And here in the terminal, we see consume job, for example, consumer, and we see the output of that payload here, test some string. So now we are printing out the payload um, as expected. So that is how you can set up um, a local consumer. Now you would also probably want to create producers 
and it follows a similar pattern. Um, but for now, let's just talk about the consumer side. All right, so this is uh, this is a very like basic consumer, right? Where we're just printing out the payload. But you could imagine you might have logic in here that will like uh, update the database with the payload um, and timestamp of when it was processed. So this, here's an example of like where you might go and do something with the data that you received. Uh, another thing you might do is like handle, I don't know, you might be like broadcasting some web sockets from here, or you might be doing some aggregation or some pipelining. So all of that is stuff that you might do inside of your consumer. So let's pause here and let's talk about how we can get this running, not locally, but when we're connected to something called Confluent um, Cloud. So Confluent Cloud it has like a, um, a way that you can sign up for free and we can create a new environment here. So let's create a cloud environment. We're gonna call this like demo. It's gonna start off free and it has a very generous free tier where you get quite a bit, I think it's like either 400 or $500 of free credits to just get up and running and experiment. And then the more you start processing, the more expensive it becomes and you can buy more like stable or production use cases for clusters later. Um, we, you can use lots of different providers in many different regions. We're just gonna say, let's start with this and launch this new cluster. Now, uh, as part of spinning up a cluster on Confluent, you're gonna get some information about um, IPs that it's coming from. You're also gonna get some uh, API keys. So we're just gonna create um, a big general uh, API key for now. I'm just gonna name my API keys here, Kafka Demo. And for now, I'm just gonna grab these and drop them directly into our settings here. Um, now in practice, you'd probably wanna put these in Rails credentials, but we're just going to stick them here. So we've got our, um, our username is the key, and then our SASL password is gonna be this password. And uh, we can say download. Um, if you look at what was downloaded, you'll get the API key, a secret, or this resource thing, and then this bootstrap server. So we wanna copy the this bootstrap server here and use that instead of our local host one. So here we're gonna update this to be that as our bootstrap server. Um, okay, we've got this long timeout, we're using plain. All right, you also see a bunch of different settings here about the cluster. And I think that's uh, enough to get us started. So now we wanna create a topic. And the topic here, to match what we have locally, we're gonna call it example. And in this case, we'll say that we wanna actually start with six partitions. And we'll say, create this with the defaults. We're gonna skip the data contract thing. And now we wanna do, um, we wanna set up a client. So we're gonna configure a client. We're gonna say, this is a Ruby client. We're up. The thing that we need from the uh, from the process of creating the client is this client ID that you have down here. So I'm gonna grab the client ID and then I'm going to drop this into our application here and say, yep, client ID here. Okay, save. And now we're gonna stop our example consumer and then try to restart it. Okay, so now we're trying to connect to this Confluent Cloud thing and we see um, the telemetry client instance change from this to this. So the, uh, that is an indication that we are actually connecting. Um, and if we try to produce something to that endpoint, actually I might need to reload this. Okay, produce some string. Now we see the test some string coming back. And if we go to our topics now back in Confluent and we open up the example, we should see some messages here. Okay, so here under total messages, that is now one. 
I've noticed that it does take us uh, maybe like 15 seconds or 30 seconds or so for the dashboard to be updated. Um, but here now we see this value of test and some string, um, which is super handy and uh, in terms of logging and such. Um, and then uh, you'll also notice that this key is blank. Now by default, when we're doing this production, or when we're, when we're producing a message, when we're publishing a message, we don't have to put a key, but you can optionally put a key in here and say like, I don't know, demo key. And when that message is published, the key, the key will be populated. So now we see demo key here. So our key is demo key and the value is some string. Uh, Okay, so now we're able to both produce and consume. We're connecting to Confluent Cloud. And this is how you can build sort of like a very fault tolerant distributed event streaming system. Um, I expect that many third party APIs will start to provide uh, Kafka connectors so that you can connect and handle large streams of data. You can do a lot of very interesting things with the connectors. There's a lot of downstream sort of uh, sources or things that you can sort of pipe your data into, whether that's like the Snowflake, if you're po like piping it into Databricks, um, and uh, DynamoDB, there's like tons and tons of different data sources that you can pipe it into downstream. So Redis Sync, um, and yeah, lots and lots of different uh, ways that you might use this real-time data. One example that comes to mind is tracking the GPS location of uh, vehicles. So Lyft uses this for doing um, real-time processing of GPS locations. A bunch of other really common use cases is like log, log handling and analytics. If you have like a very, very high volume of tiny little event data, whether that's coming from an IOT stream or from lots of different data sources, then Kafka might be a good option for you. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your time and attention and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.